will be using the I Love This Yarn Super Soft Super Saving in Peacock. Now this is a number four worsted weight yarn that is 100% acrylic and it is, if you untwist it here, you can check and see how many little individual strands there are. There's four of them, so that's called, it is a four ply. You'll need a pair of scissors, loom tool, crochet hook, tapestry needle is a nice item to have, and a way to mark your pegs. You can use these type of stitch markers. There's all different types you can purchase or even make your own to use. Now, we only need these pegs marked for the cuff, the top and the bottom, and the thumb, that is it. So I am marking them two by two, which as you can see, I have dropped a stitch here. That way I know if they're marked, I will purl stitch. If they're not marked, I will e-wrap. So I will purl two, e-wrap two, purl two, e-wrap two. And one thing that helps me to uh, keep my count even, and it makes it a little easier when working around the corners is these ones. I always leave as whatever my knit stitch is, whether it is an e-wrap, flat stitch, u-stitch, true knit stitch. So. I try to keep those ones that stitch. Uh, it just, it helps a lot. Let's get started. I always count the black peg as peg one. So our loom adjuster I'm doing between the first two marked pegs, the two pink pegs. So that is the smallest size, although the type of yarn you use does make a large difference in the size it actually turns out. That's why gauging is important. But so peg one, so we will put this first wedge between peg nine and peg 24. And we will use the wedge here, that wedge, zero one, zero two is how I keep track of those. And you can see I have this purple one here. I find it easier to even start on the wedge because as the wedge moves, your starting peg stays the same place. I will be using a chain cast on to cast on all 24 pegs. See, I did a slip knot. I want to make sure it is slipping from the working yarn and not that tail, which it is. Since this is my first peg, I place that working yarn behind that peg. This loop here, I pull the working yarn through that loop. I'll take my extra string, pull it down here. Let me zoom in a bit for the rest. See, now I have a loop and then the string coming from my working yarn and you'll see that strain will tighten up that loop. So for each peg, I just pull the working yarn through the loop. I take that loop, put behind the next peg. This is your chain cast on, also known as a crochet cast on. This is just a version that does not require a crochet hook to complete. So go ahead and work all the way around. Place this loop on your last peg. Work this peg here. Then I'm just going to be left with the loop I'm going to tighten that loop up on this peg right here, which is actually my first peg. So that first peg will have two stitches on it. You're going to treat both those stitches as one stitch. So for the finger opening, we are going to do our double rib stitch, which I'm doing two E-wrap, two purl. Since this is my first peg, that's an E-wrap and I've got them marked. So here's a pearl, and here is a pearl. All my marked pegs are the pearl ones. I can zoom this in a bit. And then the ones that aren't marked, I E-wrap. Pearl, pearl, 
and then e-wrap I'm not knitting over the e-wrap stitches until I get all the way around that helps me to double check to make sure all my stitches are correct but you can knit them over as you work the project if you would like but you do this all the way around and then you knit over your e-wrap stitches row one is complete so all your marked pegs you used your purl stitch the unmarked pegs you used the e-wrap except for this this one right here is just marked to let you know that's your very first peg of each round so that is your round one so round one through five you will be doing your double rib stitch which is your e-wrap two purl two like i just showed you round six through fifteen Go ahead and do just the purl stitch in the round. To do the thumb, first we gotta move this wedge. Taking the stitches from both ones and just placing them right beside now there's no stitches on that this working yarn here that I cut just pull that down there now we are working with the small size so that's why there's a second set of pegs the same collar it is to help you just be able to visually see where to put the peg this time we want the wedge facing in the opposite direction. The thumb is going to be worked separately in a circle. It's okay that they overlap, that's perfectly fine. And so now we are going to do a chain cast on, the exact same way we cast on for the top part of the hand and we will actually be doing the same rib stitch the same way. To mark for the thumb, it is 10 pegs is what the thumb is worked over, but knit two, purl two, that is a set of four that doesn't divide evenly. This is gonna happen every once in a while. One thing that I like to do is the inside area of the thumb is gonna be the least seen and that's where you're, there'll be one little hole here that you'll stitch close. So I am going to take all four of these stitches and we will e-wrap those stitches. So here is our purl two, and I broke that one. So purl two, and we'll knit four. So remember those are gonna be on the inside edge so they're not gonna be as noticeable. So purl two, knit four, purl two, knit two. Let's go ahead with chain cast on, just the same as the other part. wrap the first one then we are going to purl two we will e-wrap four and then purl two Then we'll e-wrap. We are back at our first peg here. That is round one. You are going to repeat round one seven more times. So row one through eight of the thumb is your rib stitch. And then you'll do two rounds of just purl. So 
now we are done with the thumb. We just need to take this inner wedge out. And what we do is, let me zoom this in some. This is peg zero two right here. We'll take the stitch from it and stretch it over to peg 10, as you can see. Might be pretty tight. And then the stitch from peg zero one over to peg 23. As you can see, I knitted that very, very tight. That's a very common occurrence with me. All right, and then we just pop the wedge out, put it back together or else you will lose the pieces and then that's no fun. But the new wedges are fantastic. They're die cast. It's just one piece and then I like the one half on it because then I think zero one zero well from this way zero one zero two. Anyway from round 23 to 32 uh, or 10 rounds however it's easier for you to think of just pearl. And I'll show you this one right here because these two might be really tight which that one right here is but I got that loop through. I want to pop both those stitches over. If it feels like the stitch is too tight to move at all, then if you take and knit over the bottom stitch of these double pegs, you can take that bottom stitch and just pop it over. It'll loosen it up some. But if you do it to one, do it to all four so it'll be symmetrical. But here we are. I'm just following the stitches on the loom, just working in the round now. Now we start our decreases. Our first one, we will be taking the stitch from peg 12 and placing it on peg 01. Then we'll take the stitch from peg 20 and place on peg 02. So there are two stitches on the wedge pegs. You loosen the bottom You move it down to the next set. Then you work two rounds of purl stitch. When you get to these two, work both stitches as one. Decrease again, stitch 11 to peg zero one. And then the stitch on peg 22 to zero two. We will loosen that up, scoot it down. We do two more rounds and one more decrease so that we are back to our original pegs. We're at round 37. We've done our last decrease. This puts us to just the arm and cuff part left of the glove. This is where we've done our decreases. Remember it is knitted inside out. So that's why it looks like this on the loom. But from round 37 to round 52, that's 15 rounds do your purl stitch and then round 53 to 62 that's 10 rounds go back to the original ribbing that you were doing at the top that's why you want to keep your stitches marked your purl 2 knit 2 purl 2 knit 2 that is 25 rounds all together to the arm and cuff section We 
we are using a basic bind off first part you e-wrap your first two pegs the second part take the stitch from the second peg which is your working yarn move it and place it on that first peg knit over and then the third and final step take the stitch on the peg you just worked place it on that second peg I'll show you again zoom this in you e-wrap the first two pegs your working yarn will be coming from that first peg you knit over that is your first step second step you take the stitch from peg two and move it to peg one knit over and then you fill in the gap that is your third step work all the way around to your first peg. Down to our last two pegs. We'll go ahead and just e-wrap them. Knit them both over. Take the second one back and knit it over. Now we can cut the yarn take it off the loom I'm taking the working yarn that I cut and I'm just going to pull it you can pull it up through the bottom down through the top I'm just getting it through that stitch it locks it in place and I get a stitch caught on something there we go see where it pulled where I just got the stitch caught on one of the stitch markers lots of times if you just stretch it It'll go right back to the shape it was. At this point, just weave the ends in. There'll be four, one at the bottom, one at the top, the top of the thumb, and then the hole in between the thumb. Now this one, all of these ones, you're basically just running them through just to hide them. This one right here, I take a tapestry needle and thread it or you can use a crochet hook and I just kind of weave it back and forth and tighten it up to where the hole closes up and then I'll just kind of run it through some of the stitches in the back. Uh, you run it down a few stitches and it won't come out and you won't have to worry about tying any knots in it and being able to feel them since the thumb area right there. But here you go how they look. Actually, if you did the half thumb, it would look like that. Alright, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching. Questions and comments in the comment section below. Guys, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, follow, and turn